It is 10 a.m. Eastern here in New York and in Washington, where the Supreme Court has announced that it will take up state bans on gender affirming care for transgender minors. So let's bring in uh, CBS News legal contributor and professor at uh, Loyola Law School, Jessica Levinson. Okay, so the Supreme Court has agreed to take up this case. Um, it is stepping into this very controversial fight over transgender rights, agreeing to hear a case this fall. Was this surprising at all to you? It's not because this has been one of the cases that has been on their conference list for a while now. Frankly, I was surprised, and I think some others were, that they didn't agree to hear the case about a month ago. Mm. This is one of those issues that I think, try as they might, they really can no longer avoid it because we do have a number of different states trying different avenues to limit or restrict or completely ban transgender care for minors. We're talking here about a state law out of Tennessee, as you said. We're talking about a law that says when it comes to minors, you cannot use things like puberty blockers, for instance. And the case is one, it's the first time it really asked the Supreme Court these big constitutional issues as applied to minors and their parents who are living in states like Tennessee and want this type of care. Um, can you give us sort of the semi-details of the case, just what exactly it is? Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about minors here and parents, and the minors' argument is essentially, why is it that somebody who is not transgender can take these types of hormones. So that argument is a First Amendment argument. These are teens who identify as transgender who are saying, but if I didn't identify as transgender, then some of these treatments would be available to me. Mm -hmm. So this is a violation of the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause. You're treating similarly situated people differently, and you don't have a good enough reason to do so. The parents' argument is different. The parents here are saying, you're taking away my fundamental right to help the direct, direct the medical care of my children. And this is a different part of the 14th Amendment. It's something from the due process called its clause. It's the liberty interests of the parents to be able to say, I'm going all the way back to an old case that says, you have the right to send your kids to a private school or a public school, to a school where they teach a variety of different languages like German. And in this case, they're trying to build on that and say, you also have the right to direct your child's medical care. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's talk about the other case the court said it's willing to hear. It's on Holocaust restitution. What's that about? So this is a case where the descendants of survivors are suing Hungary and a state-run railway. And the question is actually a very legal one, which is you can only sue a foreign country if there is an exception for the typical type of sovereign immunity that you would get, meaning you can't sue a foreign country. And so the question is, does this case fall within one of those relatively minor exceptions? Now, there's an exception where you can sue if there is a violation of federal law, for instance, I'm being a little general here, but if the seizure of the property violated, violated international law, and then you need a nexus to the United States. And this question, while it obviously has very big implications for some people, is really focusing on this question of, is there enough of a nexus to the United States such that the suit against a foreign country, which typically would be barred, can actually move forward? An earlier iteration of this case already went to the Supreme Court in 2021, and now they're going to hear the latest iteration uh, next term, the term starting October 2024. Uh, both really interesting uh, cases with widespread implications. Um, Jessica Levinson, thank you very much. Thank you.